Throughout the Xenoblade series, there have been some good quests and bad quests. Some of the most infamous quests include rebuilding Colony 6 with liver beans, constructing Doric, gathering 200 items if you don't want to indulge in violence, or searching up Metropolis for stuffed lobsters. However, there is one quest that stands out as not only being the worst side quest in the Xenoblade series, but one of the worst side quests in all of video games. We are Ursula's new groove! And we'll do what we can! Bearing her soul, the Blade Quest of Ursula is infamous for all the wrong reasons. Typically, it takes a player in the ballpark of 16 to 20 hours to complete, but the hatred all comes down to the Merc missions. So what would happen if he took a Hunter Speedrunner and tried to optimize this unbearable quest? How long does it actually take to do? Well, stick around and find out as today we dive into the inner machinations of the side quest and do a speedrun of it also. This is Orpheolus, and welcome to hell. So before we dive into the speedrun, we need to first look at the math because all of all rest, toil, and misery comes down to one mathematical problem, and that would be the fan formula. The formula seems relatively tame all things considered, but this is coming from someone who plays Pokemon. Let's break this formula down step by step, starting on the right hand side we have the vocal, looks, and soul levels. These levels are tied with the number of stamps you have in each category. At 30 stamps you'll be at level 6, and the first 6 levels aren't really too bad but the last three get extreme. For the sake of the speedrun, this will be the part we'll be looking at more in a moment. Despite how intimidating these numbers seem, there are some ways to speed things up. At 9 stamps, you will unlock Lesson 3 for each category, which will be used quite extensively throughout the run, as each of these missions offer 2 stamps instead of 1. So instead of doing 90 more missions to get to 99, instead it turns into 45 missions, and another milestone at 75 stamps given level 5 missions, and only 8 more until you get to level 9. Yeah, getting stamps levels are quite a doozy. However, this isn't the only part that leads to the quest infamy. The real bad part comes to the other half of the formula. Each number is of completed lessons, lives, and special, bolstered a number of fans by quite a bit. Doing one special gives a 16 fan multiplier to the stamp levels, and when doing the quest, you really want to focus these down. Lessons you can do on your own, only the first time completion count, but don't offer the levels as the other types do. Doing lives and special events suck because they have extreme unlock requirements. Example, rehearsal requiring all attributes at level 9 or 99 times 3 stamps. And for the other special events, half of these missions require level 9 in one of the attributes. Since these are the bread and butter of the fan formula, this leads to the long hours and quite possibly the infamous part of the quest. So what if there was a way to skip these dumb missions and only rely on stamps? Well, there is one little quirk with the side quest that very little know about, and that is on New Game Plus. You see, in New Game Plus, the game keeps track of the which Ursula missions you have done in a previous cycle. So what would happen if you started burying her soul, but in the previous playthrough you already did every single live and special event? How much time would that save? Well, to see, we will need to do some maths. Thankfully, I built a Bearing Her Soul fan calculator. Well, I don't know how to do if thresholds and sheets, so I'll have to manually insert stamp levels to make your lives so much easier. Let's say for funsies, how many fans do you start with, well, after doing a new game and doing one round of each? Well, 9 times 3 is 27. Yay, we are half a percent to our goal! Well, let's say we do some magic and magically have done every mission in a previous cycle and get our stamps to level 1. At 3 stamps get multiplied by 249 instead. That is quite a jump indeed, so we start the quest after the first milestone just shy of 750 fans. That is some progress indeed. So the question becomes, how many stamp levels do we need to hit 5000? Well, dividing 5000 by 249 gets us 20.080. Sadly, we have to get to 21 stamps because rounding. Yeah, not doing it this way will get us 4980 fans, which I found out the hard way during my run, but we'll get to it when we get to it. So the next question becomes, how do we get to 21 stamps as fast as possible? Well, the first option would be getting all three criteria up to level 7, so 50 stamps total. So 9 level 1 missions plus 21 level 3 missions would get us to the 51 stamp milestone. Times 3 would get us 90 total missions. Another alternative pathway would be to get 2 to level 6, only requiring 20 missions each, and then another 50 from going down the complete path all the way to 99 stamps. And the sum would be also 90 missions done, way better than 150 plus. And the next part of the optimization would come down to the timer on the Merc missions themselves. How reducing the timer works is dependent on the suggested field skills. For every level of a skill you have, you can lower the duration by 6%, rounded down to the nearest minute. 
This caps out at 75% or having 12 skills combined total. So if we have optimized blades that meet the requirement, we can take that 10 minute duration all the way down to 2 minutes. So instead of 1500 minutes of waiting on merc missions or 25 hours highball, we can take the time on merc missions down to just a mere 180 minutes or 3 hours. But if we factor the time it takes to set up each mission, 20 seconds or so, that would add an additional half hour to the run and some running around here and there. That would take the timing down to 3.5 hours to totally do the side quest, if perfect. Well, we have the theory, now to put this into praxis. I will just gloss over the run, but if you want to see the misery in its full entirety, I have a card on the top right. Yes, go on. Give it a go. Can't hurt. Well, going to be honest, the run itself was not very good. Mostly because I haven't done a speedrun of Xenoblade 2 in over 2 years now, so I am very rusty, especially with the menus. We do our level 1s, I do the level 2 and 4 missions once in a while because I didn't realize that the lessons done in previous runs also count for the total, but not just the special missions. Oh well, live and learn. We get to the first milestone and do the Argentum concert, then work on moving to Araya. I do a couple of meet and greets, which I get optimized down to 5 minutes ideally, which is 1 minute faster than doing 3 level 1 missions. These are the only ones worth doing since level 2 and 3 stamp missions when optimized down are nowhere near as fast as doing one three set of each. After an hour of waiting, we move on to our second concert, mess up menu some more, and proceed to the final part of the mission. Thankfully with our math from the earlier part of the video, we don't have much to do for work. Well, besides most of the quest starts now. I would go into great detail here on each play, but seriously, there is nothing to note for 99% of the quest, it is all waiting. Near the end I realized that doing lessons in previous runs, so I run into the 9480 fan problem. After 3 hours of waiting watching YouTube videos in the background, we've hit the final milestone and finished the run at little over 4 hours. To be honest, the run was garbage since I messed up on some menus and having to take some super slow level 2 and 4 missions that easily could have done sub 4 all things considered. But overall, I am happy that this mess is done. This is Orpheolus. And I never want to do Merc missions ever again for the rest of my life!